Well, it may be written on your worship order this morning with invisible ink, but nonetheless, we do have a, the blessed privilege of a reception and baptism today. Uh, the Johansson family, Dane and Allison and Aaron and Harper, are going to come join us up front here. And if the elders will come and join me as well at the front. Uh, you all know this family. You know of them. If you don't know them personally, you will be getting to know them very well, uh, especially over the next year, as our brother has now formally begun uh, a, 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 a season of pastoral internship. I said, if, if we're going to call him the pastoral intern, I get to be the internal pastor, just to make sure the alliteration works. But um, this, uh, this family uh, has come on quite a journey, as, uh, as you all are well aware and part of the reason we love their story is because their story is our story. So many of us uh, are in a similar situation. But I will say there are not many uh, pastors and church planters that would choose uh, to, to make the step to do what our brother has chosen to do. And uh, praise be to God for that. Uh, we, we truly thank God for the way that he has worked in this family and in the congregation of Agros. Uh, most of you who are here today with us, and welcome to you also. Uh, this is a great joy and blessing for us. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank our God for the grace that was given you and that you have accepted God's promise of salvation and publicly confessed your faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. We rejoice that God in His gracious providence has brought you into this congregation and given you a desire to reaffirm the faith that you've previously professed and to unite with us. And we ask that you testify before us to the faith that you profess by giving assent to the following questions. Do you believe the Bible consisting of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and its doctrine of salvation to be the perfect and only true doctrine of salvation? Yes. yes. Praise God. Do you believe in one living and true God in whom eternally there are three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who are the same in being and equal in power and glory, and that Jesus Christ is God the Son, come in the flesh. Yes. <coughs> Praise God. Do you confess that because of your sinfulness you abhor and humble yourself before God, that you repent of your sin, and that you trust for salvation not in yourself, but in Jesus Christ alone? Yes. yes. Praise God. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your sovereign Lord? And do you promise that in reliance on the grace of God, you will serve him with all that is in you, forsake the world, resist the devil, put to death your sinful deeds and desires, and lead a godly life? Yes. yes. Praise God. And finally, do you promise to participate faithfully in this church's worship and service, to submit in the Lord to its government, and to heed its discipline, even in case you should be found delinquent in doctrine or life? Yes. yes. Praise God. Jesus came to his disciples after his resurrection and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Lord Jesus Christ instituted baptism as a covenant sign and seal for his church. He uses it not only for the solemn admission of the person who's baptized into the visible church, but also to depict and to confirm his engrafting of that person into himself and is including that person in the covenant of grace. The Lord uses baptism to portray to us that we and our children are conceived and born in sin and need to be cleansed. He uses it to witness and seal to us the remission of sins and the bestowal of all the gifts of salvation through union with Christ. Baptism with water signifies and seals cleansing from sin by the blood and the spirit of Christ together with our death unto sin and our resurrection unto newness of life by virtue of the death and resurrection of Christ. The time of the outward application of the sign does not necessarily coincide with the inward work of the Holy Spirit which the sign represents and seals to us. Because these gifts of salvation are the gracious provision of the triune God who is pleased to claim us as his very own, we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the Lord puts his name on us, claims us as his own, and summons us to assume the obligations of the covenant. He calls us to believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, to renounce the devil, the world, and the flesh, and to walk humbly with our God in devotion to his commandments. Now to the congregation, as solemn vows are about to be made before you, and baptism is now to be administered, you who are baptized will do well to take this occasion to reflect on your own baptism. Christ has put his name and claim on you. He calls you to be repentant for your sins against your covenant God, to confess your faith before men, and to live in newness of life to God who sealed his covenant with you by the blood of his own Son. Now although our young children do not yet understand these things, they are nevertheless to be baptized. 
For God commands that all who are under the covenant of grace be given the sign of the covenant. God made the promise of the covenant to believers and to their offspring. In the Old Testament, he declared to Abraham, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. For this reason, in the Old Testament, God commanded the covenant infants be given the sign of circumcision. The covenant is the same in essence in both the Old and New Testaments. Indeed, the grace of God for the consolation of believers is even more fully manifested in the New Testament. Thus, rather than rescinding the covenant promise to believers and to their offspring in the New Testament, God reaffirms it. He declares that the promise is unto you and to your children. He promises, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. He affirms that if even one parent is a believer, the children are holy. Moreover, our Savior admitted little children into his presence, embracing and blessing them and saying, of such is the kingdom of God. And so, in the New Testament, no less than in the Old, the children of believers have an interest in the covenant and a right to the covenant sign and to the outward privileges of the covenant people, the church. In the New Testament, baptism has replaced circumcision as the covenant sign. Therefore, by the covenant sign of baptism, the children of believers are to be distinguished from the world and solemnly admitted into the visible church. What a blessed truth that is. And so, Dane and Allie, do you acknowledge that although our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore are subject to condemnation, they are holy in Christ by virtue of the covenant of grace and as children of the covenant are to be baptized? Yes. Praise God. Do you promise to teach diligently to Aaron and Harper the principles of our holy Christian faith revealed in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament and summarized in the confession of faith and catechisms of this church? Yes. Praise God. Do you promise to pray regularly with and for Aaron and Harper and to set an example of piety and godliness before them? Yes. Praise God. And do you promise to endeavor by all the means that God has appointed to bring up Aaron and Harper in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, encouraging them to appropriate for themselves the blessings and fulfill the obligations of the covenant? Yes. Praise God. Let's bow together in prayer. Gracious God and Father, we are thankful. We are thankful that you build your kingdom both by the procreation of covenant families and by the conversion of the nations. We are thankful that you are a gracious, merciful, and long-suffering God. O oh God, that you lead your people more and more in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. We are thankful, O oh God, for the work that you've done in our congregation and at Agros and in the life of this family, O oh God, our beloved brethren. We pray that as these children receive the sign and seal of the covenant of grace this day, that you would bless and encourage this sign and seal. That you would, by your word and spirit, work within their hearts to grow, nurture, mature, and make fruitful that faith that you have promised unto them. Bless them, O oh God, and use them mightily for your glory and work, we pray in Jesus our Savior's name. Amen. Is it Aaron going to go first or Harper going to go first? Harper, okay. I thought we might want to do that. Hey, sweetie. Good to see you. All right. Yep, it's all right. We come reluctantly sometimes. All right. Harper Grace Johansson, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. All right, Aaron, it's your turn. All right, use two hands with you, buddy. Aaron Christian Johansson, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now to the congregation, once again, as these children are baptized into Christ and become members of His visible church, the whole congregation is obligated to love and receive them as members of the body of Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, and therefore are members of one another. Christ claims these children as his own and calls you to receive them in love and commitment. Therefore, you ought to commit yourself before God to assist Aaron and Harper and their parents in their Christian nurture by your godly example, prayers, and encouragement in our most precious faith. And so, beloved in Christ Jesus, we welcome you to all the privileges of full communion with God's people. And we give thanks to God for these children that He has given you and for your expressed desire for them to know the Lord and to follow Him all their days. Along with the great blessing of the gift of these children have come responsibilities that you have just acknowledged and to which you've solemnly committed yourselves. And I charge you to continue steadfastly in the confession of faith and in the commitments you have made today before God and these witnesses, humbly relying upon the grace of God and the diligent use of the means of grace, especially the Word of God, the sacraments, and prayer. 
rest assured that if you confess Christ before men, he will confess you before his Father who is in heaven. And may the God of all grace, who called you unto his eternal glory in Christ, after you've suffered a little while, perfect, establish, and strengthen you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray once again. Gracious God and Father, as we welcome those whom you have welcomed in Christ, we pray that your blessing would be upon us all. Bless this family and the journey and the work that lies before them. We pray, O God, that you would use them mightily, even as you have for many years, for your glory and for the good of your saints. Help us to be an encouragement to them and they to us. Help us to love them, for you have first loved us. Bless us and knit our hearts together, we pray. In Jesus, our Savior's name, amen. told the elders this morning as we met for prayer, this is the, uh, the beginning of the next chapter of our uh, church's story. And uh, what an amazing story it has been. What an amazing journey for us all. Blessing that we're able to share it together. 